Hi, so this is a video in response to someone's question uh, about death and funeral. Um, the, the question was in regards to one's Catholic family and um, there's the concern that um, if one, th this person hasn't let their family know that they're Buddhist and he's afraid that, he or she is afraid that um, if they don't let them know, then the, the family is going to give him a Catholic funeral and um, they don't know how to let, they, they're wondering how they can let these, their family know that they're Buddhist and um, they want to do it in a way that is not um, seen as, as boastful or bragging or, or just trying to be different or so on. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I wanted to say, and what I, what I mentioned initially in my response was that um, the most important people at a funeral is, are not the dead people, they're the living people, uh, the people who are left behind, because they're the ones who are really suffering and are generally unable to cope with the experience. The dead person's dead, and uh, it's true that sometimes they hang around. After a person dies, they can hang around for several days, or it seems even years uh, um, are possible. Uh, but you know, especially if you're Buddhist and if you're practicing Buddhism, it, it, it's more of it should be a more concern, or at least some concern, as to how your family responds. And certainly, um, you don't want to hang around and 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 watch your family suffering. So, if you force them to do a Buddhist funeral for you, then you have to consider whether that's going to cause more suffering than than, than more harm than good. Um, sometimes. You might want to let them give you a Catholic funeral if it if it's what makes them happy. In that regard, um, before I get on to actually letting people know that you're Buddhist, just in regard to funerals, there is no such thing as a Buddhist funeral. Buddhism um, was not a religion for specifically for um, society. It's obviously a, a religion to leave leave behind society and to um, go inside yourself. So. Um, the idea of a Buddhist funeral is a bit misleading. Um, any sort of culture is is fine. If you're going to do uh, a Brahmin funeral, that's what they would have done in the Buddhist time. They, they burn the body and put it in the throw it in the river or so on. Um, that being said, there are three things, three principles to a Buddhist funeral. A funeral that that one could consider this is a funeral based on Buddhist principles, and. Um, these three principles are things that people should keep in mind and I've always taught these as three things to keep in mind at funeral. The first one is that you should never grieve for the person who has passed away and this is something that you can let people know before you die that you, you forbid them to grieve for you um, or not forbid them, you don't want them to um, and the reason for this is because it doesn't help there's no benefit that is gained from crying and, and wailing and, and thinking fondly back over the times that you had. Uh, the most important thing you can do while you're still alive is is entreat people to understand um, the transiency of life, that in the end we all pass away and, and this is only, we, we can say we're family, but this is only a temporary span of time that eventually we have to leave each other behind. So. Um, emphasizing this is very important, and it's something, something that should be emphasized at the funeral. And there's, there's often, you know, maybe there's a way to let people know that, and uh, to ensure that they keep that in mind at your funeral. That it's not, a, it's not supposed to be a grieving process. It's supposed to be a saying goodbye and moving on to the next part of life. The second thing is to take death as a um, example, and to use it as a reason to think of your own mortality. So everyone at the funeral should be understanding that, that they as well will, will pass away. And if they're going to sit around and cry and moan, then everybody who they, who they leave behind will also sit around and cry and moan. And, and so this is something that we should keep in mind. It's something that we should use to uh, wake ourselves up rather than uh, to dwell upon. Death is something that should make us think that I also have to pass away. A better thing to do than to sit around crying is to actually use it as an impetus to get something done, to, to make your life meaningful and to, to go ahead and, and um, ready yourself for the eventuality of death and to prepare yourself for the, the reality of life, that we're born and that we die. And the third thing is uh, to do good deeds on behalf of the deceased person. So one thing that you can really emphasize for the people who are still who are leaving who you're leaving behind 
is that they should uh, do something good in your, on your behalf. When people die, uh, Buddhists will often um, use it as, a, as an opportunity to do good things in their name. For people who are not Buddhists, you can just explain that um, all of the good that this person has done, all of the things that you love about them, all of the good qualities that they they um, uh, all of the good qualities that they had inside, you should do whatever you can to ensure that those qualities are passed on, are carried on, and uh, persist. And if you do good things in in the name of this person, it's like they're still alive. It's like they their uh, legacy has been passed on. So this is how you'd have how you'd run a Buddhist funeral. The other part of the question, if supposing you want to let people know that you're Buddhist, um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think, I think in fact, it would be quite useful to do that before you pass away. Um, but as far as dealing with people who are not Buddhist, you know, you have to take it, um, you, you have to take it carefully. And you have to, you know, try to help them understand in a way that uh, doesn't alienate them from you, alienate you from them, or or make them look at you as an outsider. You don't have to say you're Buddhist. You can start by saying that you're meditating. Um, say that you you understand. You're starting to understand that that happiness and peace is inside. You can even quote the Bible. Uh, you know, the kingdom of God is within, and so on. And start to explain to them the things that you've started to realize as you practice. And Buddhism is, is 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 just a word. You don't have to say that you're Buddhist or, or tell people that you're Buddhist. And certainly, it it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter what the nature of your funeral is um, for for a Buddhist. So I'd encourage you to try to stick to the the fundamentals. If you look at my meditation videos, I never talk about Buddhism, and you don't have to. You just um, uh, practice and teach and study and if you do that you should be able to deal with just about anybody and, and relate to just about anybody and you'll find that there's actually a lot less difference between you and them and you'll be able to keep your relationship with them on, on positive terms so try to explain to them again you know, what are the fundamental things that you've found helpful and useful in Buddhism and just talk about those you know, let people know that you're meditating and that when you die you'd as I said, you don't want people to grieve. You want them to, you know, that they have to die. And this is a part of life. And when you pass away, you won't expect them to do, uh, to to act according to your um, principles. And if they if they love you, if they care for you, to uh, take seriously the the nature of your life and the way the way of your being. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, um, it's uh, an interesting question. It's one that I've uh, often had to talk on. So I hope that's of use. If you have any more questions, please send them along.